This video demonstrates how to use the Autosolvate chatbot to configure and launch quantum chemistry calculation for explicitly solvated molecules. To begin with, type in the web URL shown here. You may be asked to verify that you are a human and not a bot. Upon successful verification, the website with the chatbot is loaded. To interact with the chatbot, click the chatbot icon. The chatbot greets the user and explains the three main functions it can perform. The chatbot will then sequentially guide you through the three steps. The first step begins with the chatbot, prompting the user to provide a solute geometry file. You can download the solute geometry file from PubChem API by clicking download from PubChem and specifying the solute name. You can also choose to upload a solute geometry file by typing I will upload a XYZ file. Let's explore each of these methods for specifying the solute file. Let's look at how to download a solute file from PubChem API. Enter download from PubChem in the chat or use the suggested reply back button provided for your convenience. The chatbot will prompt for the name of the solute. Here we use the example of naphtholine. The chatbot downloads and stores the solute file, automatically fills the solute parameters, and updates the molecule viewer. Once the solute parameters are autofilled, the user would be prompted if autofilled solute parameters are acceptable. If the user accepts the auto-filled solute parameters, then the chatbot prompt for the rest of the parameters required to run step one. When the last required parameter is filled, all the input parameters for step one are validated, and the chatbot would launch a job for step one on user confirmation. On contrary, users may also choose to decline the auto-filled parameters and fill them manually. The chatbot will prompt for each parameter and wait for the user to set the parameter. As with auto-filled parameters, when the last required input parameter for step one is filled, all the input parameters for step one are validated and the chatbot would launch a job for step one on user confirmation. Once the job is successfully completed, the user can view the output for step one by clicking the show output in the chat or the show button in the jobs table. The output solvated geometry file will be loaded to a JS mall viewer. A quick note to add, when specifying the solute name, please make sure to provide the correct IUPAC name of the solute. If the solute is not found on PubChem, then the user would have to upload the solute file. For instance, if the solute name Naphtholine, used in the previous example, is misspelled. Then the chatbot asks the user to manually upload solute file. Now, let's look at uploading a solute file. User can select the I will upload a XYZ file option to upload a file. The bot will provide a button for the user to click. This will open a file dialog box. Upon uploading the file, a file upload successfully message would be sent on your behalf to the virtual agent. At this point, the agent will ask for a solute name. If solute name is provided, solute charge is determined from PubChem API and the other solute parameters are autofilled using the uploaded solute file. If solute name is not provided, then the user would be prompted to input the solute charge and the rest of the solute parameters are autofilled based on the solute file. User can decline these autofilled parameters and choose to fill them manually. Just as with auto-filled parameters, all the input parameters for step one are validated and incorrect parameters are identified. Here's an example of providing an invalid solvent box size for naphthalene. If the user inputs a solvent box size that is less than 25.21 angstorm, then the chatbot would prompt to increase the box size and end the conversation. Let's have a quick look at the jobs table before proceeding to step two. Users can check the status of the current jobs in the queue by refreshing the jobs table, download the output of a completed job, and delete a current job. The output of a completed job is downloaded as a zip file. 
The output zip file of step one contains the solvated molecule structure file, named as solvated.pdb, and the parameter topology file, named as solvated.prmtop. These files are needed in step two to run molecular dynamics simulations. In the zip file, the user can also find all intermediate files generated during the force field parameterization. Please note that the following constraints apply to launching a new job. Firstly, any user at any point of time can have only two jobs in the queue. You can see here that the job queue already has two jobs. When you try to submit another job for a step one, by providing confirmation, the chatbot would ask you to delete the existing job. Secondly, the two allowed jobs are distributed as follows. There can only be one job of step one or step three at any point in time for a user. And there can only be one job of step two at any point in time. For example, consider the following case. You already have a job for step one and step two. You cannot launch a job for step three until you delete the job for step one. Lastly, and most importantly, please note that a job is in the queue until it's deleted. For example, the job here for step one is still in the queue, although it is completed and was successful. After you delete this job from the queue, you can launch another job of step one or step three. Once you've completed step one, our friendly chatbot will guide you through the molecular dynamics, MD calculation step. In this demonstration, we will continue to use neutral naphthalene in water as an example. After agreeing to proceed with step two, the chatbot will ask if the user wants to be in the dry run mode. This mode allows you to generate input files and commands for running MD programs without executing them. This may be a good option if you have your computing resources and would like to use Autosolvate Web as the input file generator. Each MD simulation parameter will be prompted with a default value. Here, we enter the number of steps to run classical molecular mechanics minimization. And don't worry if you're not familiar with the parameter. Simply click the link to access its definition on our documentation page. Here we enter the number of steps to equilibrate the temperature with the NVT ensemble, to equilibrate the pressure with the NPT ensemble, and to run constant total energy simulations. And we choose to skip QMMM. Once all parameters are filled, our chatbot will double check them with you before initiating the job. The status of your job will be conveniently displayed on the web interface. As you can see, this is the queuing system to show you the status of your submitted job. If it's showing pending, it's not completed. After refreshing the status and showing success, you can download the generated simulation input files as a zip archive. Now let's disable the dry run mode with the same example and enable QMMM simulation. In this case, you will ask to select a QM method. After verifying the input parameters, you will submit a GPU accelerated QM MM simulation job on the cloud computing backend. Please be patient. QM MM jobs typically take a longer time to complete. Once the job is completed, you can obtain the various output files in the downloaded folder. Here we can see the dot dot out files, which correspond to the output log files of Amber, the software we run MD simulation with. You will also get the .NET CDF files corresponding to the trajectory files. You can also find these files for each type of MD simulation set by the user, for example, the MM minimization and the QM MM minimization. The PR MTOP files resemble the AMBER parameter topology files. Lastly, the folder includes all the other necessary files provided by the AMBER Terachem interface. Step three is extracting microsolvated clusters from the classical molecular dynamic, or QMMM trajectory. This step requires the topology file and the trajectory file, which will be automatically loaded from the files generated in previous steps. If the user has chosen to run QMMM in step two, 
Then the microsolvated clusters will be extracted from the QMMM trajectory. Otherwise, the classical MDNPT trajectory is used. You will need to input several parameters for this step following the chatbot. The chatbot first asks for the ID of the first frame from which to begin extracting the microsolvated clusters from the trajectory. Here we enter zero. This means the extraction begins with the very first frame. Next, it will ask you to specify the interval for cluster extraction, which denotes the number of frames between two successive extractions. Here we enter two, meaning that a cluster is extracted every two frames of the trajectory file. Then, the chatbot will ask the user to provide the shell thickness in angstrom, which is the cutoff for the minimum distance between any atom of the solute to any atom in the solvent. Here we enter the default value of 4.0. This means only solvent molecules within a 4.0 angstrom distance from the solid molecule are included in the cluster. Finally, the chatbot will confirm the input parameters. We begin our cluster extraction process by entering yes. Upon completion, we can download the result by clicking on the download button. The extracted clusters, along with the files generated in previous steps, will be compiled into a zip file, with each cluster corresponding to a separate XYZ file. If we look into any of these XYZ files, we can see that the microsolvated clusters have been successfully extracted. So whether you're exploring the intricacies of MD simulation or just getting started, our chatbot provides a seamless experience.